hello and welcome to TTF's Learning Matters, a podcast where we discuss all matters related to learning. Well, we're saying learning, but there's actually gaps in learning in the wake of the long pandemic that has teachers and schools all over the world tied up in knots. What's the learning gap? I think something that we call a disparity between what a student has actually learned and what he or she is expected to learn at a particular grade. So in other words, it's the gap between the expected and the actuals in terms of learning. To discuss this with us, we have two very dynamic educators who have demonstrated remarkable leadership, of course, even much before the pandemic, but during and post the pandemic, there was some exemplary leadership because of which their respective teams not just tided over the vagaries of the pandemic, but are now making a seamless transition back to school. We're delighted to have with us Rekha Chari, Head of Elementary Curriculum and Advocacy and Outreach at Malia Aditi International School, and Vijay Rajgopal, Director, Vidyani Ketan Public School. Both of these schools are based in Bangalore. Welcome to this podcast. Rekha and Vijay. Thank you for having both of us. I'm speaking on behalf of Rekha as well. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you um, for having us, Sandhya. Mm, it's uh, not just about the cognitive aspect when you're talking of gaps. You're talking about readiness. So you're talking about, uh, you know, the affective domain. You're talking about skills. You're talking about writing. You're talking about all of these uh, various uh, aspects uh, of, of learning and not just the content uh, aspect of it, right? So uh, what have you done specifically in your school to identify the nature and the extent of the gaps, number one? And what steps have you taken to address them? The first and the foremost thing that schools or what we are trying to do is to get the children comfortable back when they are at school, right? Uh, We are not going all guns blazing, trying to do a pre-test to figure out which are those areas where children are lacking and then thereby designing interventions that is going to help address it. As a school, I think we need to be cognizant of what children need most right now when they have just about come back, whether they came back for a brief interlude during the previous academic year or now. But to answer your question, I think Uh, I will have to to quote Rekha on this, that we will have to go slow. Teachers definitely have thought about and have anticipated that there are going to be deficits uh, on the part of students, right? And rather than just administering test after test to figure out whether that deficit is there and if it is there to what extent, I think teachers are now trained to look at students and record anecdotal evidences of where the children are at number one. And then the only way to remedy the gap is by slowing down the instruction, right? Slowing down the instruction in a manner where you are finding time to address the deficit in a manner where all children learn. And what I'm trying to say, the same thing can be extrapolated across class levels. But to cut a long story short, teachers are spending more time focusing on students, observing the areas in which they are struggling and trying to infuse the learning that is deficient into their engagement plans. That is how we believe in Vidyani Ketan that things must move forward. I couldn't agree more. Um, First of all, I think before students came back this year um, and that little brief interlude, like Vijay said, is that uh, Fortunately for us, we have uh, school psychologists and the counseling services, which even spoke and addressed teachers because we're also looking at teacher welfare and kind of prepared us um, and, you know, prepared us to receive these students being aware and cognizant that they will come with the gaps and not to get, uh, you know, there is this thing that teachers carry that you know, we haven't, we haven't completed this and we haven't done that. And we, we, we fret a lot. And then to, to also, uh, to set up students for success is something that we, you know, do uh, take small steps, go slow and focus on basic skills. 
very very basic skills first is this give them the time and space to even understand what it means to be back in a structured uh environment because i primarily work with the younger students i see they they don't know how to sit for very long anymore um they do not know how to interact with their friends they have this uh, meltdowns very quickly overly sensitive if i may say uh and then what i understand from my colleagues in the higher uh, classes is also that it's the social skills that are lacking uh more so so um school psychologists are stepping in uh we teachers uh, who have been caregivers uh more so demanding from us this pastoral care where we are uh paying more attention to what are these deficits that they're coming with not again like i said not the cognitive or uh from that domain but from the other domains so um it's been now a month almost a month since school started and we are beginning to see now that students are settling in settling in uh, in the sense of coming into school with more confidence uh coming in um feeling secure within the school itself knowing that this is a safe environment and uh, teachers are very happy they uh, i think teachers are doing well we also regroup often to talk about this i think discuss it amongst ourselves and see what is it that we all need to work at again i come back in terms of the syllabus and curriculum i think we um, as teachers we teamed up we looked at what should be prioritized what are the skills that we should be paying attention to can we reduce the content but focus on developing the skills which are necessary whether it is scientific skills whether it is skills to do with the languages uh, what are those focus areas and how do we not try to cover too much content so i think it's 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 we're trying to draw that balance like i said the pandemic was new post pandemic is also new so there is a learning curve again and uh, how to uh, uh, deal with this but things are going well things seem to be uh uh panning out well so that's that's my take on it i think with uh, the overt engagement of the teachers in thinking about how can they make learning more engaging for students mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a lot of creativity and ingenuity is coming into whatever learning materials that they are designing mm-hmm. uh at least in mainstream schools where the opportunities to work with materials that have been created by teachers is uh, sparse i think there is a growing awareness uh, if i were to speak on behalf of other schools too that it's not enough if you just look at the previous year's textbook and this year's textbook mm-hmm. and then find out what's missing you need to be able to address all the things that reka just said in order to make students uh, realize how well they can cope with the deficits right um that's that i think is also coming um through uh, i think uh, that's a great point the fact that i think during the pandemic our teachers uh, took more initiative in des- in designing lessons and designing those experiences so that experience of active designing of of the lesson uh, i think is sort of paying off now right Uh, and i think the other point that both of you made in terms of anticipating mm-hmm. the learners needs i think that is that is very important and i don't know i i really do hope that we have other schools who could echo the same thing um i don't know if all systems would allow for that uh, you know as um, whether our teachers are really thinking of it uh, i'm glad that you're thinking of observation and anecdotal records and taking it slow and then i i think your next test or whatever that you're going to have in july or august is probably going to give you some meaningful data then uh, in terms of the content to move on but i'm glad that you're looking at it in so many different uh, ways too yeah so it's it's one thing to whine and crib about or complain about students not being ready students the inabilities of the students or uh, what is lacking and rather be prepared and anticipate like you said and look at what is possible and we've always known uh, that this will be therefore just moving on with what is there given to you on the platter 
and i think just that attitude of um, a positive and optimistic attitude is what we really require and it i i am an optimist i always believe in things will be all right it's going to be all right yes absolutely and i think i also like this point rekha that you made about uh, you know about slimming down the content uh, maybe i think the pandemic also taught us that mm-hmm. in order uh, we saw that in, in you know many of your schools in fact in vidya niketan school also when we work with the teachers there where you are prioritizing and thinking of what is it that is really necessary and important to transact and to work with the student i think that's a good anyway take away from the pandemic uh, probably that's going to help us with uh, bridging these gaps as well you know it's been great talking to both of you vijay and rekha your points and your perspectives have been so interesting it's going to give our listeners a lot of new ideas thank you both so much for being a part of this podcast what should classrooms and teaching learning look like in the post covid scenario if you are to minimize these learning gaps this is going to be the focus of our next podcast with rekha chari and vijay rajgopal don't forget to check it out